Anybody who has lived in this city or lives in this city knows that the number one issue that affects us over and above all else is jobs. We need jobs, and not just any jobs, but we need good paying jobs, jobs that you can raise a family on. We have an opportunity in front of us right now that can bring thousands of good paying jobs to this community, jobs that will support thousands of our families. This is not a pie in the sky. This is not something that is way off in the distance. This is right here. We could touch it, we could taste it. It's right in front of us. We are one of the last four cities being considered for this FPF amongst Sudbury, Timmins, and Thunder Bay. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, an opportunity that certainly in my last 38 years. I haven't seen anything come up that is as significant as this. People use words in Sault Ste. Marie like we're a one horse town and we need to get another horse in the race. This could be that horse. This could be that opportunity to generate the kind of economic growth and prosperity our community has been looking for for a very, very, very long time. When I um, first was campaigning for this position, Norant, uh, through an event hosted by the Chamber back in May, had visited Sault Ste. Marie and they spoke with all the candidates and they raised a concern to me at that time with respect to the CCAA process and how that might affect a Farrakhan processing facility coming to Sault Ste. Marie. It's the land at Algoma that they are looking at, that's what's being proposed. They wanted a level of assurance. Depending on who comes out of the CCAA process, how do we know that we're actually going to be able to have that land? How do we know that whoever buys that Algoma property, that they're going to be willing to lease those lands to us, was their concern. After the election, which was on June 1st, as many will remember, I arranged immediately to meet with Noron. And I flew to Noron's offices in Toronto and I met with them five days after the election. And I met with them countless times thereafter. I, I felt like I got a lot of frequent flyer miles in that first month after my election. I was back and forth to Toronto and to Sault Ste. Marie, trying to organize meetings and trying to gauge the nature of the concern. Must have been there at least half a dozen times over that period. There was a solution that we had proposed to deal with this very significant issue that was potentially a deal breaker for us in this bid process. We weren't able to reach that solution. We weren't able to uh, accomplish the, the, the ultimate goal of giving a level of absolute certainty to Noron. But through the course of those meetings with Noron, I was successful in having numerous discussions with a number of stakeholders here in Sault Ste. Marie. And uh, one in particular uh, was the CAO, Mr. Ghosh of Algoma. And I brought Mr. Ghosh over to Toronto and I sat him down at a table with the Noron executives and they were able to talk about this concern. And they were able to hash out a lot of details and made maps on the table and things went exceptionally well. It was one of the most proud moments I had since I became your MVP. My name was only about 30 days later. But it was a very positive, positive moment. I spoke with our Noron executives again just uh, a couple of weeks ago and they are now given a level of assurance because of that meeting over the CCAA issue that they've never had before. They are now comfortable moving forward and they are now comfortable looking at Sault Ste. Marie in a competitive way again. They are comfortable looking at us being able to provide a meaningful bed in the process. At that time as well, I thought one of the biggest concerns we needed to address from June was community support awareness and education. Noront is a company that, um, and their team of executives is a group that I've gotten to know exceptionally well since my election. So much so I was even in the Red Fire uh, camp and I visited a number of the First Nation communities there. I spent a full 24 hour period with them in the Ring of Fire camp. Um, I've gotten to know them very well and I've gotten to know the kind of people they are and speaking to this crowd today, I know so many of you are the same in terms of the level of passion and commitment you bring to your business every day and what the reputation of 
of your business means to you. This company cares a great deal about their reputation. These people de care deeply about the safety of their employees and about the relationships within the communities that they work in, especially those relationships in those far north indigenous communities, flying communities. They care deeply about the relationships that they will want to form and they intend to maintain in the community wherever this terraform processing facility will end up. It is imperative to them that they have a degree of community support and buy-in. Quite frankly, to put it mildly, they want to be wanted. It's that simple. They have said this to me for months and months and months. So from the early times of our discussions together in June, I've been thinking, how do we develop a community support mechanism? How do we develop the kind of community education and awareness we need to be able to satisfy ourselves moving forward. There were discussions early in June, July, August with respect to that with a number of our elected officials and, uh, and with the economic development group. And I know that our economic development team and Dan um, have been working tirelessly on the project. And they are the leaders moving this bid forward on behalf of our city. And I can tell you that those Noront executives have a very high degree of uh, respect and, um, and they have communicated that to me with respect to the EDC team and they feel like these guys are really moving the needle on this project for us in a significant way. But there is a concern and a point to what I want to talk to you about today. Community support is the biggest, most critical part of this bid. Once we know we can get through all the nuts and bolts, which apparently we can the next issue is ensuring that we show this group, Noron, that you are wanted. We want you in our community. That's not entirely as easy to develop. Recently, ever since the bid got released in November, early November, I haven't seen positive coverage with respect to this there have been concerns being raised. Now, just a few days ago, there was a report with respect to a committee that's been formed. I don't, know, I don't believe the committee has a name, but there's a committee that's been formed and they've raised concerns from an environmental health and safety perspective. And you know what? I applaud them. Because they don't know the answer to these questions and they care about this community. They love this community, and they're worried about the safety of it. The way to move forward and to deal with these issues is to work together. Just a few hours uh, earlier last week, um, uh, Councillor Shoemaker was at the uh, City Council meeting uh, last Monday, and, um, and you know, the work he put into the Amazon bid, and the, the recognition our community received on a national level was incredible. Forget about how great or not our opportunity is with respect to something like Amazon. The point is, we put ourselves on the map. We got incredible recognition out of that process. And that leadership was incredible to see. This bid cannot be any less important to us. In fact, we need to raise the bar. We need to shoot higher. This has a real potential for our community. At that meeting, there was discussions uh, that you know surrounding the work that I've put into this, and, and you know I'll acknowledge most of the work I've put in has been behind the scenes, today, forming those relationships, developing those partnerships. But there was an invitation at that meeting that we work together, that we work with our, all of our elected representatives. And I am very happy to, to accept. I'm very happy to step forward and say the time is now for us to develop our community awareness, education, and support plan. I look forward to reaching out to this group that was referenced in our media earlier. I look forward to reaching out to all of the groups. I look forward to reaching out to everyone here. I have been doing it for quite some time, trying to meet with community stakeholders. Um, 
that will be continuing to meet over the course of the remainder of this year. And in the new year, it is my intention to announce our committee. And at that time, we will host a series of town hall meetings. But the focus and my focus moving forward is going to be how we ensure that we develop proper education awareness strategy and we develop the support we need. And I will be available to anybody who wants to speak to me about that and who has questions. And I look forward to addressing those questions and I can assure you, and I can assure everyone in this community, that if I cannot answer those questions myself with the knowledge I have already developed on the subject matter, I will pick up the phone or I will walk into Noron's offices and I will get those answers for you. Because we deserve that. We deserve to know that this can be done in, a, in an environmentally safe and responsible way. Now, just very briefly before I hand it over, the bid process is due February 2nd, and that's it. It's done on that day, and everything with respect to the decision that will be made stems on what is submitted at that time. Once Noront has decided where they want to go out of those four cities, then we flip. Right now the onus is on the communities to decide to sell their community. As soon as that day comes when the decision is made as to where Noront is going, now the onus will flip on them to satisfy the environmental and health and safety concerns. They will be spending in excess of $100 million within the first year after the announcement is made, simply on environmental assessments and permitting and ensuring that it can be done in a safe and responsible way, safe for the environment, safe for the people who work within the plant, and safe for the community at large. We will be able to answer all those questions, but to all those people who have concerns right now about what this facility could mean for Sault Ste. Marie or any of the other communities, I would say please do not let yourself be governed by fears of what we do not know. We cannot address those concerns until after the environmental assessments and permitting process takes place. That's when we will have those answers. And if we are in a province that I'm sure will be brought up today that is very, very regulated, one of the highest regulated provinces, certainly in our country, and you all know that. From an environmental perspective, we have some of the highest thresholds. This will not happen anywhere if it cannot happen in a safe and responsible way for the people, for the employees, and for the environment. So to anybody who has concerns, please contact me. Speak with me. I look forward to working together with you so that we can put the best foot forward on this bid and we can make sure that we have community support across the board and to make sure that we can bring this facility home to Sault Ste. Marie and secure a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that may not come again. 